Morning, Friday the 4th of August 2017. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is here? Look, look, £144 to turn my bloody tap on a few times a day. £144? How did that suddenly jump up like that? God's sake, I might walk to the garden occasionally and flush the toilet a little bit more often than other people, but I'm in a three-bedroom house on my own here, £144? To turn my tap on thieving people they are. Thieves. The world is full of thieves, dear. Some of them now known as South East Water. Yes. God's sake, man, that's outrageous. I have had the tap on in the garden a few times, but £144 for six months? What's that work out a month? Oh, 30, 60, 90, about... About £25 a month, I don't know, something like that, isn't it? I'm not very good at maths. I got unclassified for maths. Uncla- no, I know I didn't. I got E. E. <laughs> so it's A, B, C, D, E. E is the lowest you can get. After that, it's unclassified. So I just scraped in with an E. Waste of time, maths. They, they should teach us to add up, to take away, to multiply and divide. That's all you need to do. Blooming triangles coming out with... Causes and sins and all the... What, what is all that? Algebra. Algebra. Now, let me think of one incidence. Just one incidence where I've ever used algebra in my life. I don't know. I really don't know. Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, good morning to you. It's uh, Chris Redden with today's United Kingdom talk. I do hope you're well this morning, boys and girls. Uh, I didn't go swimming in the end. Uh, yes, the, uh, my mate Ronnie came round. And uh, I was cleaning up the little utility room where um, uh, where my cat Katie uh, used to live before she passed away on Monday. So we were doing some of that cleaning. And I have to tell you, I moved. Now, I want you. Can you keep this as a secret between you and me? I don't want you going around telling everyone. There are certain people in certain venues. Gustav is probably the worst one out of all of us who's with us this morning. And th oh, thank you for sharing my uh, videos on your walls as well. That's always very kind of you and appreciated. Some people, like they, they share the video on their wall to, to desperately... Because well, we're desperate for viewers here, dear. Desperate. They're, they're dropping like flies. I lost my cat last week. She was an avid viewer of the programme, my cat, Katie. Avid viewer. Anyway, so uh, I've been cleaning up the utility room uh, yesterday. And I've been moving the fridge and the freezer and the washing machine and the dishwasher away from their little inserts, you know. Because it was clean in front of them. Got rid of all the newspaper and all that business. Uh, the first thing I moved was the freezer. I don't dare tell you how... I wish I'd taken a photograph now. No, I wish I hadn't. I'm glad I didn't take a photograph yesterday. The dust, the caked on dust under the freezer was something like out of a horror movie. It really was. I don't know why there weren't insects and things crawling around under there as well. You, you wouldn't know, though. You see, it was quite clean in front of it all. I, I pulled this freezer away from the wall. Oh, and the dust underneath that. And also in the corner, there's like some black plasticky stuff, which seems to have come come from something on, on, on the freezer. I don't know what it is. I mean, it still works all right. I, and I see at the bottom, there's like this black stuff, which is around one of the pipes. I don't know what that does, but it, it, it had obviously melted at some point. It was on the wall behind. Anyway, I cleaned that and then did the fridge. The fridge wasn't so bad, funnily enough. That was quite. That was all right underneath. But I got the uh, the old Hoover hat and the mop and and the um, uh, the, the the nice smelling flash because I can't stand bleach. Oh, I hate the smell of bleach, don't you? Oh, it's vile stuff. It really is. So I did that, and then my mate came round, so he was able to help us with the um, washing machine and the dishwasher. Now, I have to be careful with those because the pipes, if you pull them forward, they strain a bit and you don't want to pull pipes off the wall and that. Of course, he keeps pulling the thing. I said, leave it, leave it. It's not, don't pull it forward any further. So we cleaned up behind there. So I'm glad I did that yesterday. Um, uh, and then uh, after that, uh, we went to, we went into town. I wanted to buy a new monitor. I've got a new monitor now. You remember the uh, last 
couple of weeks. I told you, the picture kept flickering in front of me. Well, I've got a new HDMI monitor in front of me. I probably don't look any different to you at all there. Uh, so I went and do that. And then uh, my mate went to have a tattoo because he loves tattoos. They're all over his arm and all over his chest and all that. I mean, not my cup of tea. Well, not on him anyway. Like, who's that new footballer? That nice footballer who's been, just been signed up for £40 million. He's quite delicious, isn't he? Maybe we should do a new feature on the show, Footballer of the Week or Footballer of the Day, where I select from a massive amount of different footballers and show you the best-looking one. Would you like the idea of that? Because you know I had a little bit of a thing for Cristiano Ronaldo for years. And then I moved on to that other one who's, I can't remember what his name was now. Well, there's another one there who's just been signed up. And they all seem to be like Brazilian, Portuguese, Spanishy types, don't they? The good looking ones. I mean, you look at the English players. I'm so, I mean, there's Wayne Rooney. I mean, please, dear. And dear old David Beckham with the uh, emphasis on the word old there. I mean, why do they keep putting him on? The, the the television uh, put him in on the posters and that in his underpants. Let's see something young, for God's sake. Go away. Go away, David. We've seen it all. There's nothing else to see, love. Dear me. But there's a nice... Is it 400 million? 400 million? He hasn't been signed up for four, some Brazilian football player. I th that's an excellent idea. I think in future I'm going to select a footballer and we'll ogle over him at the beginning of the show. What do you reckon? Eh? So I left my mate in the tattoo shop and uh, I went and wanted to do a little bit of a uh, shopping. So I went into the bank, put my wages into the bank and then I was going to go to Waitrose. But we've got a brand new Marks and Spencers opened in Bracknell. We've had all the town centre has been done up with uh, new buildings, new shops. We got H&M, we've got a massive Primark. If you like Primark, there's a massive Primark coming to Bracknell. H&M, uh, Bentles closes on Saturday, and that's going to be replaced by a Phoenix. Um, and the Marks and Spencers has just opened. So I went to the bank, and then I'm walking past McDonald's. Oh, my God, there was an awful smell outside McDonald's. It was like someone had flushed the toilet. No, it was like someone, it's like 200 people had used the toilet and not flushed it. You know that smell? Oh, the, 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 disgusting. I don't know what's going on outside McDonald's. They've obviously got some sort of problem. And of course, all these people in there, they're sitting there eating in there. I mean, for God's sake. How awful. With that smell going around, nothing stops them, does it? Oh no, got to get my burger, got to get my burger, got to get my fries, got to get my shakes. They're, they spend half their lives at McDonald's, some of these people. Same old faces, sitting in there, getting fatter and fatter, <laughs> chomping into another piece of dead animal. Ghastly. So I walk past this smelly McDonald's, and it's been like that for a couple of weeks now. I don't know, they've obviously got some problem with the sewage around there. And I walked into Marks & Spencer, and I thought, well, I'll have a cup of tea and uh, uh, something to eat while I'm here. So I went up to the new Marks & Spencer's cafe, and I had a uh, jacket with beans and a cup of tea. £6.75. I thought that was very reasonable, didn't you? £6.75 for all that. Yeah, so that was nice. I came out of there, and I, know I spotted some candles. And they were like large things with three wicks in them. And I thought, I'll have a little smell of these. Oh, I like that one. And I thought, I thought I'd buy one for my mate as a gift. And they had a fruity one that was like a cotton one and, and another one. And I went for the fruity one. And uh, there was a shop assistant. But there were no boxes. They were just there. There was only two of them, two of each one out on the shelf. Um, and I said to the lady, do these come in boxes? No, she said, you just take them to the checkout as they are. But I thought it was a display. <laughs> I, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I've got a bit of a chest at the moment. I actually thought it was this, a display on there. I didn't realise you were supposed to pick one off the shelf. There was only a couple of them on there. I have to say, for new Marks & Spencer, it's all bright, clean, nice and airy. It's got that Marks & Spencer smell when you go in. But it looks a bit sparse. Maybe they bought the shop, the shop so big they haven't got enough stuff to go in. <laughs> Maybe it's building up stock, I don't know. So I picked up this candle and I thought, yeah, it's all very nice in here. I've had a nice experience. Went there, you know, had a nice meal. Talked to the nice uh, uh, shop assistant. Had a walk round. Gone downstairs by the till. Two people on the till. Both serving someone. And I waited. 
And I waited. And I waited. And after 10 minutes, I put the candle down and went. I was not acknowledged in any way, shape or form. No one said, I'm sorry, sir. I'll be with you in a moment. No one else was called to the checkout. Really bad service. Now, of course, yes, they were dealing with two people there. I mean, quite honestly, she was having a conversation with some old dear. Oblivious to, to, to the queue building up in front of her, which was me and another lady. We're just standing there like lemons. So in the end, I put the candle down and walked out. Another sale lost. Well done, Marks and Spencers. I may write a letter about that one, I think. I might have to write a little letter to them about that. Uh, I'll do some of your messages there before we continue the story this morning. Uh, good morning to Shania, who's with us, our early adopters this morning. Morning, Shania. Diane, Diane Jeb is there. Morning, Diane. Gustav says, hi, Chris. Good to have you back on the airwaves more regularly. Sorry I missed last week's karaoke, but those Audi scotch eggs went through me like a dose of so salt. Is that what the smell was the other week, um, Gustav? I did notice there was a an, an, an aura around you the other week. It, it just stank. No, an odour. I beg your pardon. An odour. You have no aura. There was an odour around you last week. I thought it was those strange clothes you were wearing. Which look like they come out of some charity shop somewhere. Um, uh, but heads up to your viewers. Little are doing 1,000 1, turkey ham cocktail sausages for £5. Catch yourself a bargain. Are they really? <laughs> cocktail sausages. You know I don't eat dead animals, dear. Ghastly, ghastly. Good morning, to Terry H. Terry H is with us this morning. Morning, Terry. Uh, Shania says, I got a B in maths. And as I took it earlier, I did a statistics qualification and got a B in that as well. What the hell is the statistics qualification, my love? A statistics qualification. I have no idea what that is. Is that one of these useless courses that the universities run? You know, media studies. They all think they're going to get a job reading the news. Media studies, do me a favour. They shouldn't be teaching all this crap. And Isn't there a McDonald's university as well? I mean, where does it all end? It's all a business thing, you know. It doesn't help kids at all. I was talking to some uh, uh, young people in the King's Head Theatre Bar on Wednesday, where I do the quiz on Wednesday nights. And it was two of them there. They'd been through university, where they were working behind a bar. They said it was a complete and utter waste of time. And now they owe £50,000. And they get interest on that, you know. That shocked me. I only found that out a couple of weeks ago. They are charged, and it's a high rate. It's not what you pay on your mortgage. It's a high rate of interest these young people have to pay on their loans um, from university, assuming, of course, that they get a good enough job afterwards. Waste of time. Waste of time. Um, good morning to Paul Gallagher, who said Fenwick's is good. Yes, they own the Bentles name, so I don't know why they've dropped the Bentles name and, and reopened it as a Fenwick's. Perhaps that, that, that does better, which I think, if I'm right in saying, I think that only leaves Bentles, uh, the Bentles store in Kingston now, which is an excellent place, I must say. I do like it in there. Morning to Jason Alexander, who says, um, uh, now you feel... <laughs> I beg your pardon, Jason. Thank you very much. Are you talking about those toilets, Jason? Uh? <laughs> 6.75 million, that footballer. Thank you, Terry. Now, can you tell me what his name was again, that footballer, who's just been bought for 6.75 million pounds? Was it six or was it six pounds? Oh, sorry. I'm getting confused here. People are just shoving numbers at me now. Get... So you'll be six pounds seventy-five for jacket potato with beads and tea. I think that's pretty good, don't you? Not as good as a Toby Carvery, of course, you know, all you can eat for five quid. Yeah. Mm. Morning, AD. Uh, a GCSE in dealing with numbers, for example, putting numbers into charts. To be honest, I can't remember what I did in statistics. I can't, I can't remember what you did in statistics either, my darling. <laughs> Any idea at all? <laughs> my mate today, I think, um, perhaps should I name him? No, I won't name him. <clears throat> I won't name him. One of my mates today, I think, is going for a colonoscopy, which I have had, of course. I've had a colonoscopy. And he's a little bit concerned. I think he's going today, or he might have had it yesterday now. I'm not quite sure when. I won't tell you who it is unless he wants to name himself on this uh, on this, uh, on this, this stream now. Unless you want to name yourself on there now. It's up to you, OK? But I'm not going to name you. Yes, I think he's having a colonoscopy. He was a little bit worried about it yesterday. And he had the powder. 
Now, I'm going to describe this in a nice way in case you're eating breakfast, so do not worry. Don't turn off. I can ill afford to lose viewers. Please, don't turn off. Um, so you have to have this powder, and it makes you go, and you go, and you go, and you go. Believe it, and that goes on for about an hour and a half. And you have to have that the night before, and you have another one the next morning. Like, I think it's two packets of powder, and you drink this powder, and then within half an hour, oh, my God, and you're, you're, you're running. <laughs> you are running, and you can't go too far away from a little boy's room, or a little girl's room, of course. All right. Um, and uh, so he's got the colonoscopy. He's a little bit worried about it. They're knocking him out, which I find surprising, because he didn't. They, they, I don't know anyone else that they've knocked out to do this. So it's basically a pipe, and it goes up your bottom end. Uh, up your bottom end and, and a little phone. And it's not really painful. <clears throat> um, not not really. It's more uncomfortable. Uh, the the only pain I got really was they have to pump air into you. And he, the bloke pushes a button on this thing. Once it's in, okay, go, going in and getting to the right place, no problem at all. Absolutely no problem at all. I had no sedation and I had no pain relief either. No problem at all. And actually getting it into position and you can go, oh, you know, what was that? You know, it's OK. It's OK. The only pain you get is when he pushes a button and it pumps air in. I don't know if it's air, carbon dioxide, whatever it is. And that kind of stretches you inside. Oh, yeah, a bit like that. But I have to say this happened about four times to me. And the pain was about five seconds each time. And that was it. That was it. You've got nothing to worry about going for a colonoscopy. You really haven't. I mean, the doctor might want to tell you if there are risks involved and all this and all that before. I recommend you don't listen because I didn't. I, he said, right, do you want to know about the risks? I said, no, not really. He said, OK, just sign there. <laughs> and that was that. Because you don't, you see. The trouble is, as I've said so many times before, you read uh, side effects and all that on me different medicines that you take uh, over the years. And you, you probably never take anything. So I don't think you've got anything to worry about the colonoscopy. I just don't understand why they're knocking you out. Maybe, uh, uh, perhaps you're in another country doing this, are you? And they're doing it another way. That's the only thing I can think of. But you're not to worry at all about that if you haven't had it yet. If you have, I'd love to know how you got on. All right? Um, boo, 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 boo. Stirrups. Not stirrups, Paul. No, no stirrups. No stirrups. You're on your side. Laying like that. I mean, I could lay on there and demonstrate in my um, Lady Godiva on the horse pose. Do you remember her? Lady Godiva. <laughs> Jason says you're looking very slim. The, the diet's going well. It's not a diet, dear. It's a lifestyle change, not a diet. It's a lifestyle change, Jason. I'm not hungry, believe me. I have big meals. I just change what I eat and how I cook it. That's the way it goes. Good morning to Ray Reynolds, who joins us this morning. He's very busy over the weekend playing the ukulele in all parts of the country tomorrow. And um, uh, and tonight as well, I think you are, aren't you, Ray? Morning. Uh, morning to Adam the Plumber, who's with us this morning. Morning, Adam. And Gustav says, I'm surprised you need stretch. Well, quite honestly, you know, once it had got, once this once this camera had gone up, me, I said, have you got a larger one? <laughs> Couldn't feel a thing. <laughs> Anyway, back to the story, back to our story this morning. So I came out of Marks and Spencer's after my bad um, my bad customer service there. <clears throat> and I went back to the tattoo place where my mate's having his arm done. He's having it done here. And I've gone up the stairs and I can hear them talking because you go up the stairs. And two blokes, and it, the, the usual tattoo blokes. There's a young lad, very nice actually, who was sitting there on the desk looking at magazines and things and things like that he's doing he i think he does the piercings and there was a girl who was just having a a, a, a ring thing put through her bottom lip which probably cost her about 30 quid i don't know why people have these things done i mean i must admit i had a couple of earrings once oh yeah and i had the big gypsy great big gypsy earrings here and spiky hair i did unfortunately i have no pictures of me like that None at all. I don't know if my sister would have any. But I don't ever remember having pictures taken like that. Because, of course, when we were young, <clears throat> we didn't have smartphones. You had to have a camera. I, I, you know, we, we rarely took pictures, did we, when you think about it? You know now, you know, you, you, you see 
people, including myself, you know, and they're like, oh, let's just do a picture. Oh, there's a picture. Oh, there's another picture. And they're all of ourselves, aren't they? Well, you don't see so many landscaped pictures. You have a look on Facebook. It's all, oh, there's a picture of me, there's a picture of me, oh, there's a picture of me, and uh, here's one of me, and uh, there's one of me there, and that one, that's one of me over there, and it's all of me, isn't it? Or you. What happened to the beautiful pictures of the mountains? Or Big Ben? Or the River Thames? Or the cows in the field? Or your dogs, or your cats, or your goldfish? Or the beautiful flowers. What's happened to all those pictures? No, it's a picture of me, one 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 of me. And all out there on dance floors and places like this with these mobile phones. Click, 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 click. And all of me, 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 all the time. The worst example of that, I went to the Royal, Royal Albert Hall um, two years ago, or is it last year, for Classical Spectacular which comes round now and again. If you ever get the chance to do that, you'll love it. It won't be classical music you don't like. Oh, sorry, don't know. It will be stuff like Land of Hope and Glory, uh, Zodiac, Zodiac the Priest, something like that. I can't remember, you know, Zarek, Zorik, Zorik the Priest. Sorry, good morning, Kevin Webster. Morning. Um, and Rule Britannia and all that business. It's wonderful. And that seafaring. It's all like that. Excellent. And halfway through, we're sharing a a box with some people. Halfway through, I got up. <clears throat> I said, I'll go and get a cup of tea to my mate. So we went and got a cup of tea. And then this girl um, perched herself on the balcony. So you got a box like that. And she sat on, on the little bit of wall here, a, sort of pointing away from the crowd, actually, actually on the balcony edge. I just take some fun. Every now and again, she pu pushes her hair back. Right? Okay, okay, she's taking some photos. I kid you not, we went and got our tea. We came back 15 minutes later and she is still taking pictures of herself. What the hell's all that about? I mean, she she looked she she weren't ugly, certainly not. She was quite pretty. But how many pictures do you want of yourself, for God's sake? And I think there was her husband with her as well. He was just kind of sitting in the corner, picture after picture after picture. Well, of course, you know, you can do that now with your mobile phones. I could sit here and take. I could have taken ten thousand pictures by now, couldn't I, on my mobile phone? But we never had this dev these devices when we were children. Well, you had to separately take a camera. And that camera would have been able to take a maximum of like 36 photographs until you had to change the film. Which was a little cartridge. I mean, you, there were different types of film. Uh, you could buy a cartridge where you open the camera, drop it in, close it, click, and that would work. And you had another thing where you put it in, and you'd have to pull the film around into the other little spindle and then twist it, you see, until it got so far. Then you'd close, uh, well, you'd close the back cupboard, then you'd twist it, twist it, twist it until the little number one came on and um, then start snapping away with your photographs. But after you got to number 36, if, if you had a 36, I think 36 was the maximum. I can't remember now. Or you could get a 12 one. You get a 24 one, you get a 36 one. When you got to 36, you'd then have to wind. I think you had to wind the whole film back on backwards onto its original thing. Take this little thing out and then put another one in to take some more pictures. So it was all a little bit, you know, hassle, really. And you would think about the pictures before you took them. You know, she wouldn't have been out. I can't do that. Just wastes film. And they're permanently taking pictures of each other, all these people in there, aren't they? I don't know. I don't know. Um, AD says, most girls from Coventry find themselves naked in the town centre. And yes, there are often animals involved. Oh, I hope not. Is, there, is that right? What's that about Coventry? I used to work in Coventry, AD. Wonderful place called Rainbows. It was a, a, a nightclub, which I had some good fun there, actually. Uh, the governor's name there was uh, Terry. 
he was he's like the owner, him and his uh, other half, Martin. And uh, Gary was the manager, and I had uh, wonderful times there. But the journey did me in. I'm, I'd be leaving there at three o'clock, and I wouldn't get back here till I past four in the morning. It was so tired, so tired by the time I got back. Do you know I haven't I haven't got the um haven't got my phone in thing up there, have I? Do you want the phone in thing up there or not? I'll put it up there just in case. Hey, up, there's a phone number there. If you want to call in at some point today, feel free to call in. Phone number's up there, 020 or if you don't want to call in, that's fine as well, OK? Terry H says, can you, get, can you remember going to get your photos developed? Used to be so exciting going to pick them up. Yes, you're absolutely right, Terry. Yeah. <clears throat> you used to love it, didn't you? So going back to the camera thing, you'd then get the little film... You'd take it either to the developers, which could be Boots the Chemist, or there were there were actually shops dedicated to photo developing, wasn't there? And they would you could also buy cameras and things like that in there and new films, paper, that sort of thing. Like a like a stationers, but not quite a stationers. They they develop your photographs in there. And um it could take anything up to two weeks. Oh, yes. So you drop these pictures in because you wouldn't really know how, how good the pictures have come out. You drop them in there. You wait a couple of weeks and you go back and say, yeah, that, that's £5.50, please. And you pay your money. And then you get this little, little envelope with your treasured little photographs in there. And you'd come out of the shop and you'd have to get them straight out the thing. And you start looking at them. Oh, wow, look at that one. Oh, that's not so good. And sometimes some of the photo places, they if you hadn't done it, taken a good picture, they would actually put a little sticker on uh, to assist you in how to improve it. It might say, oh, exposure too low. Uh, you should have used a flash on this. They'd, they'd actually put a sticker on a photo if it hadn't come out so well, trying to explain to you how to improve it for next time. Oh, it was excellent. Excellent. Good morning to Carmel Ridgely this morning and Peter Hyde as well joining us today. And it was great taking photos. And then, of course, later on, you, you got the send away photos where you, you'd pop your film in an envelope and you'd send it away. You know, with, with a check for, I don't know, four pounds or whatever. A few days later, it would come back as an envelope and uh, there would be your pictures. Oh, it was wonderful then. A completely different experience taking the pictures. Were the pictures as good? Yes, I think they were. I think they were, actually. Now you can just take hundreds of pictures and not worry about a thing, can't you? Hmm. Anyway, back to uh, back to the tattoos, boys and girls. So the blokes in there, uh, very nice chaps indeed, I have to say. Uh, usual tattoo type people. There, there was the young lad on the desk, he was reading magazines and doing someone's piercing. She had this thing through her, you know, through her lip, one of those things like that. And uh, the other one, a, a, a typical tattoo, but quite a, quite a large chap, young, lots of facial hair, tattoos all over the place, and a really nice man, really nice man. We're chatting away to him. And I have to say, I looked at my mate's face, uh, Ronnie's face, and I took great pleasure in seeing him in terrible, terrible pain as this little tattoo needle bleh, bleh, like was going into his skin. <laughs> and he's like this. <laughs> and uh, I'm chatting to the bloke. I said, oh, I said, I said, I can see he's in a lot of pain. Carry on. <laughs> I said, that's why I don't have any of these done. I don't, I don't know I could stand the pain. And my mate has got a lot of tattoos, but it is, I mean, I, I would imagine, yeah, he's he was having it here. I would imagine it's it's more painful to have it there than it would be here. Oh, I don't know about here. Perhaps I could try it out with this, with a needle. <laughs> Shall I get a needle and do a live tattoo on the show? Something like that. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, he, I don't know. Yeah, I would say that's more sensitive there then it would be there or there, having tattoos. But he, he was in a lot of pain, I could see it. <laughs> I, I just wish, I don't know why I didn't get the camera out to film that. That would have given you a lot of great pleasure as well, wouldn't it? To see, to see one, someone in an immense amount of pain while he's having that done. 
Anyway, so that was finished. He's had a couple of uh, red hearts done. And these people, they're very talented, these people, aren't they? Don't you think? Tattoo artists and, uh, and, and, and graffiti artists. I mean, such great talent, that is. It really is to be able to do something like that and do it perfectly every time. I don't think my mate's ever gone to any tattoo place anywhere and had a bad one done. I don't know. Perhaps you know people who have had a, a bad tattoo done in the past, do you? They all seem to know exactly what they're doing. And my mate had to send him the picture of what he wanted. So he's had basically um, a, a horseshoe with two playing cards. And I think it was the Ace of Hearts or something like that. Not that he's got a heart. You know. I mean, my heart, personally, I used to have a heart until it was broken into several thousands of pieces time and time again. So I only have pieces of my heart in here, boys and girls. <laughs> All right. So we did that. Uh, I bought myself a monitor from, um, not Audi, not Asda. Oh, what's the other one? Argos. I bought myself a new computer monitor in front of me, which uh, you can see here, actually. Uh, let's go on that one there. there we are. That's that one there. So I've got a new computer monitor there. So if that tells me what's going on, what what your what your what is going out to you, you see. And there's about a 10 second delay, roughly. It's anything sort of between seven and 12 seconds, usually. So there's a new computer monitor there because the old one, the picture kept flashing. Do you remember I told you? And it kept changing... Um, ratios, the, 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 and I didn't know what the hell was going on in front of me. So I've got this HDMI one now from um, Argos. I was chatting away to the lady in there. I must have been able to talk to her for about 15 minutes. She's an old dear. She works now. She's been in there ever since I have been in Bracknell. She's been working there for about 22 years. So I had a nice long chat with her. Ever so nice she is. And I've got this computer monitor. It's uh, I think it's a 22-inch. £89. So I thought that was very good value. It's an Acer. And they're all roughly the same. You can buy a Sony one for like, I don't know, £500. I do have, I was going to put one of my 32-inch televisions in here and use that as a monitor. But I thought to myself, you, you, whatever I've got in front of me might start reflecting back on my face and behind me because that would be quite bright, although I'd turn it down. So uh, that's why I went and bought, a, bought another monitor. So we came back here. Um, I, I set up the monitor. Pulled out a few old wires. Oh, the dust under here was quite bad as well, I have to say. The hoover came out here. Hoovering away I was. Uh, so that all went up nicely uh, sorted. Uh, went to bed. I tr I'm having trouble sleeping at the moment. I keep waking up every few hours. That's been going on for a while, that has. I don't know why. Uh, both in the afternoon. I, I generally have a couple of hours sleep in the afternoon. Well, I could hardly sleep at all yesterday. Um, probably I've still got the cat on my mind quite a lot. Who's no longer with us. Um, and at night time, I find myself, I keep waking up every couple of hours at the moment. So I got up. Uh, I, I managed to, what did I do? Oh, here's, if you're in London or you get your pictures via Crystal Palace on the television, you need to rescan your Freeview televisions now, boys and girls. There's new channels and some channels have moved. You may have noticed already. Did you click on the channel? Oh, where's my telly gone? You've got to rescan the thing. Do you know how to do that? Oh, play. well, get a man in. No, you shouldn't get a man in. It's, it's like you hit the menu and there'll be something like installation or something like that. <clears throat> and you rescan your telly like that, OK? So I did that. I replaced a time switch. Now, I had arranged, well, I didn't, I tried to arrange an electrician to come and replace a time switch, which operates the lights that are all around my house, which has failed. Because, I, of course, I ordered a new one. And the wiring on the back of the new one, which the front of it looked exactly the same as the old one. That's why I bought that one. But the wiring on the new one looked different to the wiring on the old one. Oh, I don't know which, which wires what. Yeah. So I had arranged or tried to arrange an electrician, but he's going away for two weeks. And he said, well, give us a ring when I come back. OK, so I'm like, oh, two weeks now, you know, all well, my light's not working around the house. Um, so I had another look at it while I, you know, I'm sort of fairly calm, sitting down, put my glasses on, read it, and I thought, oh, I think I do know how to do this. So I did it. The funny thing is, whenever I do any sort of electrical stuff like that, I panic. I panic here. When it's all done, so of course I do the right thing, I turn the electric off and I replace the wires and I put it all on the wall. And then, <laughs> this is true, this is true. And then 
I go to the fuse box and at arm's length, I do that and I put my hand over one ear and I flick it down in case it goes bang. <laughs> Does anyone else do that? <laughs> but uh, And I have to do that again. So, and I go like that, click, nothing's happened. Yeah. Then I go over to the unit itself and I have to do exactly the same thing. I get, get ready to turn it on at arm's length like that and I go, click, and nothing happened. I looked outside and on came the lights. Chris Reardon, Electrical Services. Thank you very much. So I'm quite pleased I've done that. Probably saved myself £150 doing that. Um, then uh, I, I did I did a bit of nighttime garden. I've still got a few plants to put in that I, I bought the other week. Uh, do you remember I bought uh, a load of plants? About 250 plants for about... Uh, 250 quid's worth of plants for 20 quid. You can do this on, on the online garden places, like Sutton Seeds and all that. When they get to the end of their um, season... The, I think it's the perennials. Is it the perennials? The ones that come back every year. What they do is sell them off really cheaply because no one wants them after that. So you get a lot for a very short amount of money. So I had my dinner, did some gardening. Then I cleaned the house. Well, I say I clean the house. I clean the kitchen. I'm paying particular attention at the moment to, uh, to the kitchen for obvious reasons, you know, after my cat's gone and all that. Uh, so I, you know, I ran the skirting board. Oh, it was filthy. I don't dare tell you it was filthy. I'm cleaning up walls. I'm mopping the floor, I'm hoovering, so I did a load of that yesterday. And the stairs! I did the stairs! I've got a blooming stain at the top of my stairs. I'm so annoyed about that. I know what to do about that, really. I, can't, I don't seem to be able to get the stain out. I could have a bloke come round and try it. Last time I had a bloke come round and do carpets, though, he was very quick. And I thought, how could you have done the job so well to be that quick? Oh, I've got a vax, haven't I? I forgot, I've got a big... I've got. Hang on a minute. Just a minute. I've got one of these. Do you want to see this? I think it's here. Oh, there it is. Look, I've got one of these. Wait, so, oh, no. Hang on a minute. Everything's come out of the cupboard now. Have you got one of these? Look at this. That's the, look at this. Yes. That's the job that is. I'll give it a go with that, actually. I completely forgot I had that. I've only used it once. What happens when you get something like that? Other people find out you've got one. Oh, can I come around and borrow your vax? Yes, of course you can. And it goes out to other people. I haven't used it myself. I can't remember how to use the damn thing now. I think it's got an attachment as well somewhere, which must be downstairs. I'll give that a go on that uh, on that stain on the stairs and see if that sorts it out. And then I watched some telly. Um, I can't remember the name of the film, but it was on film four the other night, possibly called Rock School. Rock school, and it's about this bloke, and he's in a rock band. Now, you will know rock bands. They're quite mad. They're strange, mad, loud people. I love rock bands. One of my favourite rock tunes of all time is Eye of the Tiger. Do you like that one? Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. I might try that one tonight at the karaoke. Do, do I look, am I like a rock singer? I don't think I don't know if that's suitable for me really. I might give it a go just for a laugh. It's all about having a laugh, dear. Come to a karaoke night and have a laugh. Don't matter if you can't sing. I can't sing. A certain agent can't sing as well. <laughs> I jest, of course. Do I? I don't know. Um. Yes, so it was about this bloke, and he gets sacked from his rock band for being too outrageous. And then he's got to earn some money, and he pretends to be a teacher. Goes into this school, and these kids are all expecting maths and all that, and of course he's, he's, he's a bit thick, a bit like myself. A bit thick. He don't do maths, English, and all that. And he starts teaching them rock music. It's an excellent, hilarious film. It is so funny. And there's all these little kids and all that. And eventually he says, right, you're the lead singer. You do the drums. You can be security. And there's a little gay boy in it as well who's uh, about 14 years old. He said, can I do the clothes design and all this? Oh, it's, it's so well made, this film. I'm not quite sure what it's called. It could be called Rock School. I don't know if anyone else has seen that one. Have School Is it School of Rock? Is it School of Rock? It's a really, really good film. And I highly recommend you watch that. It's funny and it's warm and it's lovely. 
It's really lovely. The, the little gay boy has me in stitches. Because he is. He's like um like an older gay camp young man. But much earlier, you know, like at 14 years old. And he's, and he's got these designers, he's got little little pins and he's doing all this. Oh, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And then there's there's a little girl and she's so lovely. And the, the, the bloke who's doing the teaching, the one who got sacked, the one who's pretending to be a teacher, he's lovely towards these children. There's a little girl. <clears throat> um, I, I, Again, they're all about 14 years old, I think. And uh, she wants, I think she wants to sing. She says, but she says, I think people will laugh at me because I can't sing and I'm fat. And I thought, oh, wow. And the bloke says, he said, it doesn't matter if you're fat. They want you for your singing. I look at me. I'm fat, but people love me. Fat is sexy. And it's so nice, that film. So do watch that if you get a chance. Um, School of Rock, I think it's called. School of Rock, OK? And that's what I did. Then I came to bed. <clears throat> and that was my day yesterday. So busy, 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 eh? Let's have a look here. Uh, good, 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 good. good morning to my sister. She's with us this morning. Sharon Butler, that's my sister there. She's just finished a uh, late night shift on Babe Station. Sharon, my sister does a little show on Babe Station. You might have seen her on there. Uh, she did recently get sacked from there through lack of calls, unfortunately. No one used to ring my sister. It was very sad. I I shouldn't really tell you this. I've been making some of the calls under a disguised voice just to keep her in a job. I mean, it's costing me a fortune. £3.50 a minute. But I've been ringing my own sister on Babe Station to keep her in a job. That's what's... That's what sort of brother I am, you know. Now, I don't want you to tell everyone that. Please don't tell people that, you know. But family, you got to do the best for you. If, if I haven't got the number on me, otherwise I'd flash it up on the screen there, my darlings. I really would. And you could ring her as well if you wanted to. But we got to help the family. Ring up my sister on Babe Station. I do disguised voices, you know. Oh, hi. Is that, is that Sharon? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's it, you know, a bit like that. Uh, good morning to Ricky Dog. Morning, Ricky, who says, you'll end up with hair like me if you carry on touching electrics. Yeah, you could be right there. <laughs> do you do electrics? You must do electrics. I'm quite proud of myself. I saved myself £150 calling that electrician there, haven't I? All righty. <laughs> oh, dear, there's, oh, there's my sister. She says, I don't do Babe Station. My guess is one of her children are watching at the moment and they don't want to know about it. So I think we'll leave it at that. 0208 is my phone number this morning. If uh, you're watching, OK, um, what have we got here? Ah, here we go. Some more excuses not to go flying. Now, I'm constantly on this programme. Uh, I, I should be working for the British Tourist Board. I really should. You do not need to go abroad. Why, oh why, <clears throat> for, for, for like 10 minutes of sunshine, do you want to go and spend hours at an airport? All the worry of getting there. £200 for the privilege of parking your car in a car park, which is nowhere near the airport. And I'm on a mission to get you to stay in the UK. Well, here we go. This week's holiday horror story. Holiday makers, this is in this morning's Daily Mail, trying to return from Europe this weekend have been told to get to airports. Are you ready for this? At least, at least three hours early amid fears of mayhem at passport control. Have you been for a passport control recently? What a miserable... You've got to be really miserable to do that job, haven't you? Especially the American ones. God, they don't smile. You think they're bad enough? Go to China. You smile and they take you round the back and beat you. It's true. Terrible. This is what I've been told. You are beaten. Beaten. Through unconsciousness to unconsciousness if you smile at anyone in a Chinese airport. The Americans, miserable most of the time. You know, they sit there. It is typical, stereotypically, wherever you go in the world, that's what the, generally, that's what the, um, what, what, what the passport control is like. Americans just sit there, you know, another donut goes in the mouth, stamps a putt. Oh, what's that? I don't know what that is. Another donut goes in the mouth, stamp. 
stamp. Don't smile at them. And of course, if you go to any Europe, any any of the passport controls in Europe and they talk to you, you won't understand a bloody word they say because they're rude not to speak English, dear. They should all be speaking English, as well as you well know. Anyway, on to the story. Airline bosses say thousands of UK travellers could miss flights as airports struggle to cope with new EU border rules on one of the busiest weekends of the year. Well, what's this they're doing now, then? There was chaos earlier this week. I thought they all wanted free movement. You see, they can't make up their minds, can they? There was chaos earlier this week as UK tourists were left queuing for up to four hours at passport checks in Spain and France. Well, don't go! Don't go there! There's nothing wrong with pontins and butlins and caravans and hiring cottages and things like that. 10 million people expected to pass through Europe pier, being airports tomorrow. And on Sunday, airlines fear a complete meltdown that could leave passengers stranded. Last night, it emerged that British Airways and EasyJet were sending text alerts to customers urging them to turn up early. Ryanair said it was advising passengers to arrive at least three hours before departure on short-haul flights instead of the usual two. But Airlines for Europe, which represents airlines including the free firms, said these measures may not be enough at the worst-hit airports and urged travellers to consider arriving even earlier. And it's, I mean, airports are such boring places. They really are. And you, 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 do you actually think you're getting bargains in any of these shops? <clears throat> You've got the Dixons with the disinterested staff. Oh, it's just horrendous in airports. Why don't they put a cinema in an airport? Why can't you have a little cinema showing films and, and perhaps, I don't know, do they have children's play areas in there? Somewhere to play with the children and all that business? No, it's just shop after shop. It's so boring in airports. One of the reasons I don't fly anymore. Um, the story goes on. To make matters worse, passengers were warned they will not get compensation from their airline or be able to claim on their travel insurance if they miss a flight as a result. Well, you see, I, I, you see, I don't believe any of this would happen if people stopped travelling. They would have to make it easier for you to travel. The chaos has been caused by the EU rules that mean travellers from outside the Shannon Free Movement Zone are subject to stricter vetting at passport controls. Instead of a few seconds, the process can now take up to 10 minutes. What's that? Each? God. Airports are being accused of failing to prepare. Um, so, I mean, that's just awful, isn't it? I mean, it's bad enough having to go to these places. But to have to stand there for just trying to get your passport through, oh, it's awful. Awful. And if that's not good enough, <coughs> now, you, like me, may like hot weather. But there's a warning today. In today's Daily Mirror. British tourists soaking up the sun in Europe face scorching temperatures as dangerous heat wave sweeps of the continent. It's very, very hot. How hot do you think it is? 35, 36? Try 43. 43. Countries such as Spain, Hola, Italy, Ciao Bella, and Croatia. Well, I don't know what they speak there, dear are set to see blistering 40-degree heat, which has triggered a series of severe warnings. Oh, what's going on there? Just a minute. Uh, right, hang on a minute. Italians have named the heat wave Lucifer. Isn't that something to do with the devil? In Italy, where the Pope resides, in the Vatican, dear? No Lucifer there. What a strange name. With 11 countries are braced for dangerous weather conditions, including Serbia, Hungary, Romania, Croatia and Poland. Meanwhile, back in Britain, the mercury is set to reach high 20s. Oh, that's all right, isn't it? We're comfortable here, thank you very much. Tw high 20s will do me. 25, that's OK. And then over 25, no, oh, it's a little bit warm, isn't it? You know. 30, no, don't do 30. Don't do 30. Warnings were issued for 26 European cities as a heat wave from Africa starts to sweep the Mediterranean with high temperatures expected at least until Monday. So we're not getting it here. A red alarm 
indicating the highest level of risk from the heat has been issued for the popular Italian cities, Florence, Rome, Venice and Verona. Now, I've been to Rome uh, a couple of times and I went to Rome last, uh, it was about three years ago now with my mate. And uh, one of the things we did was when in the Vatican, they do a Vatican tour, which uh, they take you through the Sistine Chapel and all around there. And it was good. But my God, it was hot in there. Oh, and there were so many people were all moving in the same direction in this heat. We looked around the museum and it was all very nice, but it was so hot in there. So God knows what that would be like. Morning to Dino. Morning, Dino. You're up late, aren't you? 20 to 11, you joined us. I've been chatting here for 50 minutes, love. Oh, dear. So uh, do be careful if you're going abroad. I mean, that would be too hot for me. 40 degrees. In the south and Sardinia, temperatures are expected to reach 42 degrees uh, centigrade. Uh, as I say, my mate's just come back from Cyprus. And uh, he was saying it was very, very hot there while he was there. But they had a pool, so he spent a lot of time in the pool. Trouble is, you got anything st sticking out of the pool? You know, I think I don't know. if Do you get sunburnt through the water? Not quite sure if, if that happens or not. Hmm, strange. Uh, Gustav says, darling, actually caught your sister in Babe Station a few nights ago. Oh, thank you very much. Um, did you like her? She's quite good at that job. All I can say is what she can do with a lollipop is amazing and illegal in a number of countries. Is that right? <laughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, dear, dear me. I've got a cough there. <coughs> Excuse me. Good morning, Dino. How are you? Good morning. How are you? And welcome to the show. Hello, Dino. <clears throat> well, I'm going to talk about something that nobody likes to talk about. Oh, please do. PPI. Oh, have you got? Have you won some money? Have you got some money then? Well, I won some money about. Well, not won. Seven, it's your money you've paid well, in. I got it? back some money about seven or eight years ago. Right. Now I was contacted directly by my bank <clears throat> to tell me that the laws had changed yet again and they're reconsidering my case and I thought well I haven't put in a fresh application right. so they asked me to go into the bank and I thought oh they're going to try and sell me something it's got to be like some fresh insurance or something or other anyway I went there and uh, they said no the laws of, of PPI have been relaxed yet again right so um They've had reassessed my case, but until I feel the forms in, they wouldn't uh, process it. So anyway, I filled them in about oh, oh, six, seven weeks ago. Through the door, um, I got a check um, two weeks ago. I got two checks last week, and I got another check this morning. I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. But apparently what's happened was the, go the government went back to all of these companies and what they were basically doing is all the mortgage companies were just literally just turning people down totally flat simply because they were so overwhelmed with PPI claims that apparently they were stacked up on the desk because I've been watching videos and really? stuff what, for, on, all, all on, on all of the companies and reading into it and doing stuff over the past. But, uh, just a minute, Dina. How much, dear? How much? The first one was twenty six and a half thousand. You the got second... a check for twenty six and a half grand. Yeah, the second one was ten thousand. The one last week was another eighteen hundred, and another one for eighteen hundred arrived on the doorstep this morning. And you know, I've always liked you, Dino. Mm. I do think we should go out on a little date or something like that at some point, or perhaps a nice little holiday. Nothing to do with the money, of course. Oh, yeah, but Brighton Pride's on uh, the weekend. Uh, I might, Brighton I might sort of Pride? There, might oh, for God's and, and sake, man. Little baby. <laughs> well, well done. I mean, I, yeah. spoke, I spoke to my accountant about this. I don't... I, I remember, I'm sure I'm always offered insurances of some sort or another. Yeah. But um, I, I never took any of them. Is it that's that, that thing, if you can't afford to pay, they were sp supposed to pay it off, weren't they? Is it that? Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I never well, took it, them it, up. It, it's also on your mortgage. I mean, it could be on credit cards. Yes. It could be. It could be if you <clears> was to if you got a car and you took it on HP. Right. Oh, right. I mean, yes. It can be absolutely anything and everything. Right. It could be where you had, let's say, you 
did home improvements and you had double glazed windows put in. Yes. And you were you were paying off for it, I don't know, for five, ten years, whatever. Oh, right. no, it could don't... be that. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't really do any of that. I just... Um, it could I... be absolutely yeah. anything. It could be your very first mortgage when you first started way back when. They all just included it. Did you I mean, go... I didn't, I, some of the things I didn't even think of, like I had a, a home improvement loan on my first place. I had double glazed windows put in. And um, I, I took one out then, and I, I got money back for that, not even dreaming. I went right the way back and listed everything I could possibly think of. And uh, like I say, to get turned down, you know, the first time around, um, and then the all to start rolling in. I mean, it's just like boom, boom, boom. That's I've unbelievable. Just... Did you go to one company to, to find this out for yourself or what? I did. Um, but did... what I did, I got this one company. Um, did you have to pay but... them? Yes, but right. I, what I did is I negotiated with them. Oh, right, yeah. I, and then what I did is I dropped them like a ton of bricks. And then I went directly to the bank right. and uh, asked them. And this was a couple of years ago, the first time around, when I first got the money back. Right. So uh, Lloyd's had my, my application there. And like I say, uh, they contacted me out the blue again. This was about six or seven weeks ago. And uh, when I went in and I, I filled all the forms in, I, and like I say, they've started rolling through the door quite unbelievably. That's excellent. Well, you got, have you it, got anything to do with the money? Um, not really. Any I'm, home improvements I'm, or you just shove it in a well, bank? Well, as, as you well know, I moved out to the countryside um, about a year and a half ago. I moved yeah. out of London because uh, my parents weren't too well and I, I, we all moved into the country and absolutely loving it. Where were you again? Um, I, moved in, I moved into a ready-made, ready-made home, really. Sort of absolutely amazing. And where, where are you? I'm out near Caterham. Just Caterham past. and Surrey, yes, I know, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm surrounded by hills. I open the curtains every morning and it, it's just nothing but greenery. Oh, that's Park, what you like, palms, isn't it? That's owls, what you like. I was watching, you know, um, I've been watching this programme on Netflix, uh, The Crown. I don't know if you know it at all. Right. But I, I um, but I know of it. Okay, so uh, it was showing some of the Scottish Highlands yesterday, and that's just stunning up there, isn't it? It oh, really it is there. beautiful. But the, but the only thing is, if you're a Londoner or you like the city, and you do go out to some of these places, it's one of these places you'd go in and have your fun and get out quick. In other words, after a week you'd be bored because. You'd want the kebab shop on the corner. You'd want the fish and chip shop. You'd want the garage open. No, late, so you no, could pick something I, up. No, uh, you would. Believe me, you say you pe- wouldn't. People say that to me, but I, I don't want a kebab shop, or I don't do any of that. I don't do kebabs or well, go out well, to I'll bars give, give, or anything like that. I'll give, I'll give you a for instance. Where I live, there's there's about um, six or seven restaurants. Right. Now, what they all do is they <clears throat> they take their bookings. Yes. And they have one sitting about six o'clock and they have another one about half seven, quarter to eight. If you was to walk in off the street about nine o'clock, they'd say, sorry, we're closed. Even though they're open and there's people still sitting there. Oh, yeah. They all, they all do want, you know, like one sitting because they don't want to be standing there for two hours waiting around just for you to eat and everybody else is cleared well, off. We, we found but this. I, in... find, I find that a lot out here. We found that in Cardiff. I yeah. went to Cardiff um, about a year ago for a Manolo concert. And we came out half past ten. The show finished. We're all starving. Now. Let's go and have something to eat. Even the yeah. bloody chip shops were closing. We couldn't get anything. Even the chip shops. There was nothing around the concert venue where you could go and get something to eat afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my sister has a place up in in uh, Dundee. Right. Um, she has a small estate up there, <clears> and we <throat> went up there. We had some things we had to do. So we were clearing up and we did everything we had to do. And we even went to the local pub and they wouldn't serve us dinner after like half past nine. The kitchen had, had shut down and they were open till really? 11 o'clock. I think, what? So then you drive around trying to find somewhere to get something to eat. And they're all open, but as soon as you walk in, sorry, no, no, we, you know, we're closing. And they're not closing till 11, but they won't do late sit-ins. It, it's all one or two sit-ins. Isn't and that this is funny? Thing, as, as you move further out, this, yeah. this is what you get. I mean, you know... Obviously, you have to change your life and plan your life mm. differently mm. As, as you move further out to expect these things. But 
it, it can be a bit of a culture shock if you do go further out. It can be. Because you're used to everything in London, 24 hours a day, on your doorstep, being open. But you're all right where you are, aren't you? Oh, I love it. I absolutely love do it. Do you miss the if kebab I... shops and all that then, do you? Absolutely not. No, neither would I, you see. But That's I go thing. to the left, and I've got a little village to my left, five minutes walk. If I go... Ten minutes to the right, I'm back in on the edge of London and everything's open 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, it's the same, so same no, as me nothing, from here. Nothing's far away to the left or the right. Yeah, it's good. It's just absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying life out here. It, it's lovely. And, I, and funny, I'll tell you the funny thing. I've got a train station right opposite my front door. I can get into Victoria or London Bridge in 22 minutes. Oh, that's when I was in When I was in mm. Streatham... I couldn't get into London. In you've got, you've got minutes. the, you've got the straight end. See, I can get into Waterloo in an hour, but we don't have a. I don't think there's a, a direct train that goes all the way and without stopping from Bracknell. Certainly not in the off peak. I think there actually there might be one doing peak. Might be a couple doing peak hours uh, mm. that stops in one place. But from here to, <clears> for example, here to, from here to um, sometimes I go to hospital in Hampstead Heath, don't I? So from here to Hampstead Heath, it's about an hour and twenty minutes. Wow, <clears> from that's here. quite dramatic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a wow. huge difference. That, that that really is quite a lot. I mean, you know, like I say, you know, you when you move, you have to take all of these things into consideration. Mm. I mean, I was quite lucky. I didn't actually con- consider all of these things when I moved. I was just quite lucky <clears> yeah. that they were there. And yeah, that, yeah, um, yeah, and that you know I got the the really fast train service. Good. So yeah, twenty twenty two minutes into Victoria and back in and back into amongst all the. That's not bad, is it? Hustle, hustle and bustle. You've still but, got it um, there. You see, you've still got it all there, really, haven't you? Yeah, I'm not not complaining at all. I'm, I'm sorry, enjoying it. Good. <sighs> Well, it's lovely to talk to you on the phone, dear. Uh, if you need any help spending that money, do let us know, won't you? It's no well, problem I do, at all. I do need a personal shopper. Oh, do you? Yeah, so whenever, <laughs> whenever, you, whenever you're around, I might, Sit- might buy you a sandwich with a cup of tea. <laughs> That'd be very, very nice. A sandwich, dear. I'm slim as world. We can't eat bread, dear. Have you gone mad? Bread? Don't. Don't 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 you do an ultra fiber? What's it called? Ultra light fiber diet or something? No, no, it's um, it's well, it's it's it's, it's what you eat and how you cook it. That's the difference. You're never hungry. So you don't use oil hungry. though, do you? Pardon? You don't use oil or fat. No, or anything, that's do you? that's the biggest thing in there. Correct. No oil or no fat. So, for example, I used to eat those packets of rice. You know, Uncle Ben's very nice. Oh yeah. Um, microwave three minutes. It's all done in oil. Now I've got dried rice and it gets done in water. It tastes exactly the same. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you use a George Foreman or anything like that? No, no. Uh, I, I've got a grill. Got a grill. Wow. I eat a lot of corn products. Oh, right, um, you're vegetarian, aren't you? Or yes. vegan, what yeah. are you? Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. So do you not find it a little bit harder um, finding those sort of things? Because I tell you what, my, my cousin... When he comes over from America, and he was over here about two months ago, yeah. and uh, it has to be um, gluten-free um, and lactose intolerant. And I tell you, oh, I no. struggled. I struggled in no, the No, I haven't got any of that. One of the things, if I'm do- I can do eggs. Uh, well, yeah. uh, Terry H has just mentioned fry light. So if you do need to fry something, you, need, you do get this fry light stuff, and you spray it in the pan about three or four times, and then that's it. Yeah. There's no oil. And that's that's yeah. the replacement for oil, really. So eggs, yeah. Uh, you could do sausages in there if you wanted to, bacon and things like that. You know, you can do that all in a in the fry light. You don't use oil at all. No oil, really. No butter. Nothing like that. What about? I mean, like I said, I I, <laughs> I struggled with the gluten free and the lactose intolerant. Yes. I went into Sainsbury's. I went into Marks's. I went into Waitrose. Mm. I even went into Lidl's. And all I could find with all of that stuff, and I know they're all saying, oh, we all sell this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but all I could find was, I could find was uh, butter, milk, um, uh, I think the odd loaf of bread that didn't have a few That's right, in, yeah. And yeah. very little else. So yeah, I thought, well, how, yeah. can, they all, and how the, have, can they all be saying that have, they, they, sell, they sell all of this and we <coughs> cater it for everybody? They don't. Have you, heard, have you had the gluten-free bread? It's vile. 
Oh, I have. It, it tasted like cardboard. Oh, it's awful. And it just falls apart in your mouth into powder. It is the most disgusting yeah. stuff ever, that. There was one There was one brand that actually wasn't too bad, and I can't remember what it is now, and it was in Waitrose. That wasn't too bad, but it didn't taste anything like bread. It was horrible. Horrible, that, no, that, that stuff. None of them do. None of them no. do. I mean, I, I can't stand that... Um... That corner. I know you probably love it. it I do. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's about adjustment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. And yeah. I and I tried it in some soup that I had. Soup up in, in corn in soup. Yeah. Basically, I have this thing called Singapore laksa, which is coconut soup. They sell it up in Wardour Street. Right. And what they do is they they put corn in it, and it's it's really amazing. But I have to get them to take it out because to me it's like eating plastic. Why would you put corn in soup? They do. Uh, it comes in tiny, ti- but they tiny little squares. It's absolutely amazing. That's right, yeah. Absolutely amazing. It's coconut soup with oh, noodles. How strange. I mean, it's just, oh, it's to die for. How strange. I know. Well, you know. Um, Don't know that one. I like the corn peppered steaks, and I've got a corn cottage pie in the fridge as well. I might have that today. But but does it actually taste like meat? I mean, does it really? Um. Yes. Or is it? Or is it all the spices and everything? I that think sort it's of the make, spices. Make up for it? I think it's the spices, and in which case, does meat actually taste of anything? Do you know what? Today it doesn't. I don't um, think it does. It's a, and, you know, it's just. Uh, and even when you there. buy organic, <clears throat> or, or some you know some of the organic is quite a rip off. The fruit I find fine because with organic fruit, if you put organic fruit out. It does last a lot longer, I have yeah. to say, especially things like bananas and tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. lasts a lot longer. You can leave it on the side and it will last twice as long banana. as anything else. Banana! I love banana! Yeah, I love bananas. I love my banana sandwiches. <laughs> oh, I used to take those into the cinema. <laughs> Do you know what? When you tell people you, you eat banana sandwiches or whenever I go into a restaurant and ask for a banana sandwich and a cup of tea, because most of them are, uh, you know, the, the Europeans that work in all of the restaurants, oh, they look at me twice. Oh, they can't even make they, tea, dear! I know, but they go, banana? banana, banana sandwich. You mean a banana? I go, yeah. I love to see their reaction. Oh, like, that's a, uh, we're sitting they, here with a banana sandwich while you stuff your face with those frogs' legs. Thank you very much, mate. <laughs> absolutely. Well, nice to talk to you. You too, Dina. A real pleasure. Always feel free to call in. You've got such a nice, nice conversationist voice in there, dear. Thank you, my dear. I look forward to our uh, sandwich and a cup of tea. When yes. I need my personal shopper, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ping you. Do let us know. Cheerio now. <laughs> Bye. Dino calling in from uh, Caterham in Surrey there, boys and girls. He's, he always does a good call, doesn't he? Right, we're going to wrap up shortly, boys and girls. Uh, Ray Reynolds says, Ray and Johnny will be playing their ukulele today. I, t- I told you Ray was doing something this weekend, didn't I? Uh, in London's Covent Garden at 2.30 and 4.30 t- uh, p.m for the 30th anniversary celebrations for the Jubilee Market, playing again on Sunday too. So uh, if you're up in London's Covent Garden, go in there. And when you've seen them, there's plenty to do around there. Uh, There's loads of bars and things that you can, you know, go out to afterwards or something like that. All right. Okie doke. Um, Let's do today's birthdays. Which I haven't got lined up here. One minute, really. Here we go. Richard Ross. Happy birthday today to Richard Ross. Doesn't say your name. Oh, hang on. Can't, can't get that up there. One minute. Richard. Here we go. Have we got your age? No age there. Happy birthday, Richard. Hope you're well, sir. Happy birthday to Samantha Jones, who's 31 years old today. Looking good, Samantha. All right. Happy birthday, Samantha. Julie Mason today is 39 years old today. Carl Knott is 33 years old today. Happy birthday, Carl. Samantha McDermott. Oh, hang on a minute. You look like Samantha Jones. Have you changed your name, dear? Did you get married or something? Got two names there. I'm not sure which one to wish happy birthday to. I'll do it to that one as well. Samantha Bermuda, 31 today. Uh, Christopher Sanderson is today 59 years old today. Happy birthday, Christopher. Michael Topping. Oh, you wonderful man. He's uh, not been too well recently. Michael Topping. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Michael. I hope you're recovering all right, sir. Uh, Karen Kodish, who does photography. She does weddings and things like that. She was a a black cap uh, customer years ago, and uh, she's a lovely girl. She is. Happy birthday, Karen. I don't know how old you are today, but uh, I always always got you in my little thoughts. Happy birthday, Karen. Christopher Lloyd. Happy birthday today to uh, Christopher Lloyd. Beautiful picture of you and your dog there. And uh, Narinda. Narinda. 
Our good friend from that place in Ealing that I used to work at, happy birthday to you as well, sir. I think you're working in, last time I talked to you, you were working in Boots the Chemist, I think, wasn't it? Anyway, happy birthday to you as well. <laughs> To you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. There we go. There's all your birthdays today, boys and girls. And that's it for the show today. Now it's Friday night. So tonight I'll be hosting karaoke this evening, uh, every Friday at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. That's tonight and every Friday. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at midnight. I hope you can join us uh, down there, OK? Apart from that, have a nice Friday and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. And again, once again, thank you to those of you that shared the programme on your wall. Much appreciated. And I'll see you soon. Cheerio now.